What's up, everybody? Adam Mann is here for Open Studio, and today we are working on the major scale in eight ways. I'm so excited to work on this with you today. If you've not worked on the major scale in these ways, uh, get ready because you're about to become a better musician. So what are these eight ways? This is a kind of way to practice the major scale that's taught often by the great Barry Harris. And what it does is it helps us to understand the important relationships in the major scale. It can be used on really any scale, actually. It doesn't have to be the major scale. We're working on the major scale today. But what it does is just it gets us out of that linear only up and down thing. So we will practice linear a little bit, uh, but then we'll practice thirds and then triads, and then chords. Did you know you could practice chords with scales? Yeah. Then we're gonna practice approach notes in thirds, triads, and chords, and then uh, the amazing pivot. All of this helps us to become much, much better improvisers, to be able to really talk and think on our feet as we're playing and understand, like I said, those important relationships of the scale so that we're not just plugging in licks or anything like that. We're really able to compose on the spot. Shout out to Chris Parks from the things I learned from Barry Harris YouTube channel for coming over to Open Studio Pro for the last several weeks and helping uh, teach this concept. It's been amazing. We thought we would take a swing at it here today. We do have a new course actually called the Major Scale Course where I go through these concepts in every key, all 12 keys I practice with you. We even do some pentatonic stuff over there. So please go check that out. We're going to do a launch discount this weekend only. You can save $30 on that course. You can click the link below. There is a PDF as well, free for you to take home with you. That's all I got to start. Let's get to work here. The B flat major scale is all we'll be working on today. Again, linear thirds, triads, chords, then approaches and thirds, triads, chords, and then the all important pivot. I think you might be game changed or life changed, depending on how we do it today, if you've not worked on it like this. And you can take this to every key. You can take this to you know the Mixolydian scale or Dorian scales. It doesn't matter what the scale is. Like I said, it's just all about this concept of really understanding how scales work and how these notes work. Let's start with how you probably already know how to think of scales, and that's linear. So when Barry Harris teaches this, he teaches going up to the seventh, not going to the octave, just going up and down within the octave. Remember, we want to get to know the notes. We're not trying to do technique practice, although this does help our technique. So let's play together here. We're going to practice together eighth notes up and down here, just up to the seventh and back. Here we go. One, two, three, and four, and even though we're in six. Just run it over and over again. So our B flat major scale, as simple as it gets, right? But if you're new to improvising, you, know, you really want to lock in. This is B flat major. These are the notes of B flat major. Let's take it double time here, double time. This is not a technique exercise. This is a music exercise. There's our first way to practice the major scale. Next up is thirds. We are just gonna go up here, skipping a note of the major scale. So instead of B flat, C, D, we just skip that C and we go up to the D. And then we do the same thing in thirds, diatonically, right? So it might be a major third, depending on where you are in the B flat major scale, it might be a minor third, like C to E flat, and a minor third, like D to F, but then a major third, E flat, to G, right? We're still staying in within that group of notes of the B flat major scale, and we're just going all the way up. We'll go up, going up, and then when we go down, we're gonna go down, going down. So we're still thinking those thirds there. And we'll end right there. Let's try it, eighth notes, two, three, and four. Down going down. Do it again. Down. Up. 
again. Again, we just want to understand that these are the thirds in the key of B flat major. So important for being able to improvise. One more time. Let's go double time. Again. Again. One more time. Okay, now we're gonna take our thirds, we're gonna add another third on top. So we're gonna do a triad, right? So in B flat, the first triad is B flat, D and F. And it's like we're moving those notes up the B flat major scale, but we're gonna go up and down. So we're gonna go like this, this pattern here of up and then down and then to the next triad. Just like this. So crucial. And then when we get to the top, just like we went up, going up, down, going down with thirds, we're going to go up, going up, down, going down with triads. So great. So you can almost think of them as a block. And whatever pattern we decide to put on them, in this case, up, going up, down, going down, that's cool. But we're really thinking about them as groups that move around. Let's try it here in eighth notes. One, two, three, play with me, and. Down going down. Try it again. I mean, you can hear how handy this is to understand how these work. Just moving them around, you know, if you're on a B flat major chord as you're improvising, so handy. One more time. Down going down. Double time here. You got it. One more time. Okay, we can add a whole other third now on top of our triad, so we have a group of four. We skip another note, right? And we get what we call chords, right? That's just a B flat major seven chord. And then we can move that up the major scale, the B flat major scale. These are really useful. We want to get that, that bebop sound where we're surrounding chords like that. Incredible. Let's try it. Eighth notes up and down again. We're going to go up, going up, down, going down. Let's try it. One, two, three, and four. And Down, going 
going down. Let's join these together so that there's no rest. Just join all of these chords together as we go up, going up, down, going down. Let's try it. Two, three, and four. again. Double time. Here you go. Okay, now we can go back and do our third triads and chords again, but we're going to add one very important thing to the equation. That is an approach note. We are going to approach the bottom note of the thirds going up by one half step. And it doesn't matter if the half step is diatonic or not. So it's the same concept of grouping these thirds together as we go up the B flat major scale. We're going to add a half step right below the third on the way up. So, so this would be, right? So instead of just B flat D, we add that A right below. Instead of just C and E flat, we add that B natural, right? Just a half step below the bottom note, right? The next third is D and F, we add that C sharp right below the bottom note. The next is E flat and G, we add the D, which is diatonic, but it's still a half note below, half step below that E flat. F and A is the next third, we add that E natural. Right? So just a half step below the bottom note of the triad. It gets you this really cool. Isn't that awesome? Then on the way down, we're going to reverse it. We're going to add the half step to the top note. So if we think about going down again in those, in those thirds together, but then breaking them up, add that half step uh, approach to just below the top note. Right? So the top note is D to B flat, right? So we had a C sharp right below the D and then a B natural, right, from the next one, C and A, approach that top note of the third from a half step below. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. When you start to craft melodies, you can go outside of... outside of the changes, but it still sounds so melodic because this is a tried and true time-tested melodic device. Amazing. Let's try it. Eighth notes. Two, three, and four, and... Down going down, now we're approaching that top note. Let's do it again. Keep it going.
Let's double time it. One more time. And if you want to close your eyes like I just did or look at your instrument, uh, that would be good. That would be good for you to kind of have to conceptualize and understand how this works, that we're taking these thirds and we're adding an approach note when we go up from the bottom by a half step from, to the bottom note and we go down from the bottom by a half step to the top note, uh, which is just one way to do it. There's several ways to do it, but that's thirds with the approaches. Okay, we can do this same concept. This approach note concept is absolutely stunning when you can really start to apply it to your own improvisation. We can do the same thing with really anything, but what if we did it with triads? So it's the same thing. We're taking our B-flat triad and moving it up diatonically, right? But now we add an approach note uh, right below the bottom note of the triad by a half step, whether it's diatonic or not, right? So here we have the B-flat major triad. We approach it with that A right below. The next triad in our diatonic triads is C minor. We approach it, you know, that C from a half step below. And the same way, all the way up, we just approach the lowest note of the triad from a half step. This really helps us to understand the triads even more because you really have to know where you're going. And then on the way down, we go down going down, right? But we add that approach note uh, just below the top note of the triad. So here, if our first triad is B flat, D, and F, right, we, have, we add that half step just below the F. And then here it's A, C, and E flat, just below the E flat. You know what I mean? Amazing. Here we go. Eighth notes, two, three, and four. Do it again. Double time. Again. One more time. Now you probably saw this next one coming. We can do the exact same approach scenario with our chords, right? Remember that B flat, D, F, A, and then we move those up. We can approach each of these chords, right? A half step below that bottom note as we go up. Oh, but not that sloppy. And then a half step below our top note, right? So if we look here, the first chord going down, right, is our B flat major seven chord. We approach that A natural with that G sharp.
I mean, you've heard that a million times because it sounds so great. Now we're starting to get into like how this bebop language is put together. Let's try it. Eighth notes, two, three, and four, and. down Let's do some double time here. Here we go. And again. Here we go. Imagine if you had that together with every scale in every key and you were able to just rip that off whenever you want. It'd be amazing, right? It would be such control you would have over music. Okay, we have one more thing to work on, and that is our pivots. Now, check this out. This is where the afternoon goes from good to great. So we have our seventh chords. Now, uh, something that Barry Harris talks about a lot is this pivot notion. So you can take this shape, right? And if we take the first note and we leave it where it is, but we take the rest of this chord and we drop it down an octave. And then we do the next one. Right? It's the same notes. The first note is the same in the same range. Every other note, the top three notes get dropped down an octave. So this is where you get this kind of like... That kind of bob and weave sound that we get in bebop comes from this. And it's a way to practice pivoting on these chords like this. It's incredible. Let's try it with eighth notes. Uh, here we go. Two, three, and four. Just recognize that they're the same notes, but the top three notes are just displaced down an octave. And then you could use this whenever you want. If you're running out of room, like if you play the saxophone or the trumpet, these are so handy because you can still do an E flat major seven, just like this. But if you're way up high, you can drop it down. Isn't that great? Let's do it double time. Let's try it. And. Now you don't, you don't have to do both of these. In fact, this is just a demonstration to show you that they're the same notes. You wouldn't play these one right after the other. Let's just do the pivots to show you what that would sound like. So just the second part of each of these. Two, three, and four, 
Yeah. It's like we're doing seventh chords, but we're dropping those top three notes down an octave. Let's do it again from the bot from the top. just working on that's how you get that that sound isn't that amazing i find this to be so helpful i find that when students start to really approach their scale playing like this their practice like this where they can understand not just like how their fingers work over their instrument how to get a good technique which is important it's really more about how music works and how this uh foundational scale the major scale works i encourage you to check this out in all keys i encourage you to check out the course the major scale course dropping this weekend you can save 30 dollars on that uh only this weekend by clicking the link below you're going to want to do that again shout out to the amazing barry harris for everything i mean just for existing thank you barry harris and shout out to chris parks again uh we hope to have chris back uh over on open studio a lot in the future he's great so thanks everybody thanks for your practicing until next time happy practicing